Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Thomas, and welcome once again, praise God, to the teaching ministry of Christian Faith Ministries with Dr. Greg Thomas. I want to teach from the subject that we've been teaching in a series called The Anointed for God's Purpose, and today is part five. Now, today we're going to talk about, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be dealing with and talking about some of the biblical characters, praise God, that were anointed by God for various things that God called them to. And so, it's all about inspiring you and encouraging you, praise God, to understand the anointing and how priceless it is. Amen. And so as you understand it, praise God, I pray that you're going to begin to see yourself in a different way and that you begin to see that God has created you for a purpose. And it's for, praise God, for you to do great exploits. <laughs> Those that know that God shall what? do great exploits. Amen. And so therefore the anointing is the thing that can break yokes. Praise God. It can promote you in places. Praise God that, that uh, people would shake their heads and they say, well, how did she get there? You know, or who do he or she think they are when God has anointed that individual? We see that even in politics, you know, where someone on yesterday didn't have the anointing for what they were called for that season. And then overnight, praise God, Amen. God anoints that person, amen, for that specific season, for that cause, of that purpose. Are you with me? So we've been anointed. That's why the Bible says that we know that all things work together for good for those that love the Lord and to those who are called according to his purpose. Those who God has called, God anoints. Now listen to me. Today we're talking about Joseph. Now the Joseph anointing is, and I've taught this before, and I need you to write this down and really understand this because the Joseph anointing is different from a lot of other, praise God, men and women of God that were anointed. Now, Joseph was anointed with specific gifts and praise and talents, amen, to do certain things that God had anointed him for. So no matter what happened, we see the word of God that we find in Romans that says, and we know that all things work together for good for those that love the Lord. That's why Joseph could say that what, the, what you meant for bad, God meant for good. Are you with me? Because when you've been anointed, God will take what seems to be the worst of a situation and still elevate you because God is in it. Hallelujah. God has promoted you. God has anointed you. So praise God. When we look at the Joseph anointing, we find that the Joseph anointing is two things. It's prophetic and it's also entrepreneurial. Now, this is speaking to a lot of you or who are in, praise God, ministry, praise God, or you've been called by God, you've been anointed by God in the marketplace. Amen. And um, I, you know, I have some personal uh, things that I'm watching, observing in, in, in national politics, praise God, that I'm not going to mention here because I don't want you to, praise God, get, get sides uh, uh, tracked on, on what I feel and what I think about something. I just want to say that there are people that God has anointed. Amen. That's why the Bible says, touch not my anointed. Amen. And do my prophets no harm. Amen. But here, praise God, when you're talking about the Joseph anointing, praise God, he was prophetic and he was entrepreneur. Now, God is raising up men and women, praise God, in the marketplace to take dominion in government, arts, entertainment, medicine, church, family, and business. Now we call that, some in some circuits, we call it the seven mountains. Are you with me? Now, the nations are, are, are all around us, praise God, are over the world. We're entering into a time, praise God, of transition and change. Are you with me? And so God is raising up his anointed. We see it. Glory to God. I, I, I see it in the Congress. Praise God. Young people, praise God, are anointed. They have a boldness, praise God. And they talk about God in the marketplace, and they are, praise God, they, they are anointed to do what God has raised them up to do. They are fearless, hallelujah, amen. They've been anointed for that, amen. So God is doing this. See, the church and Lord should not be afraid, praise God, or off in a corner living in fear. See, God has been preparing the Josephs, praise God, in advance as he has hidden them from the world. And in some cases, in the church. Now, I want you to know that if you have been hidden while serving another man, then you may be one of them. 
Now, praise God, oftentimes, you know, God will raise you up and you've been anointed, but it's not your season for the anointing to come forth. Are you with me? And we see that again in government where you might have a vice president and you say, well, why he or she is not saying anything? They, they, they got these gifts and they have these talents and they're supposed to be the vice president or they're supposed to be, amen, uh, saying something, but then they don't say anything. But when it's their time, glory to God, you see the nation begin to gather around that, that individual, praise God. But why? Because of the anointing. So I want you to know that, praise God, and, and so oftentimes I want you to know and understand, sometimes you may have to be hidden. Sometimes you may have to walk in humility, praise God, but our God has not forgotten you. Hallelujah. He has a great plan for allowing you to experience, praise God, what you've been going through. Joseph was God's secret weapon and so are you, glory to God, that God is raising up for such a time as this. See, Oh my God, he was used to save the ancient world called Egypt during a time of extreme famine. And now some Josephs, praise God, already being positioned, praise God, and, and, and beginning to be used to handle future crisis. Now, other Joseph will come forth in the midst of the crisis. It's through crisis and through pain and suffering where the anointing is produced for a greater cause, for a greater work. See, as Joseph said, what the enemy, the devil meant for bad, God has meant for good. Joseph, praise God, was both prophetic and entrepreneurial. This made Joseph unique, my brothers and sisters. Usually prophets are Praise God, are prophets and entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs, meaning that they stay in their circle, they stay in their lane. Amen. In Joseph, these two anointings were combined. And amen. So Joseph, as an example of a of a leader, God has called in the marketplace. Praise God. God has been preparing him in 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 hidden places around the world. Just like he's praise God, he's using you. He's he, he's been preparing you in those hidden places around the world. Say, a mantle, write this down, is a garment worn to signify authority and the office. Elijah had a mantle that signified his prophetic office and authority with the Lord. Elijah asked Elijah for a double portion of his spirit, and Elijah said, possible, but it's difficult. When Elijah was taken to heaven in a whirlwind, a tornado, Elijah saw the whole thing. And the Bible says he received the double mantle. Now, Elijah used this mantle to part the Jordan River and then convince the sons of the prophets, hear me now, that he had in fact inherited the mantle of his mentor, of Elijah. Now, in the New Testament, we hear of another person that came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Now, Jesus said that if you, praise God, could receive it, John the Baptist was the Elijah that was coming. Now, there's a tradition that John's father, Zechariah, took Elijah's mantle out of the temple and gave it to his son. Now, John the Baptist, for his prophetic commission, are you with me? John the Baptist's prophetic mission was to be a forerunner of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. See, Zechariah rightly discerned that John should have a mantle that would be recognized by Israel as being significant. Now, the mantle was given by his father. The Hebrew word is the word for mantle is, I'm going to spell it for you, K-E-S-O-N-E-S, Kassons, Pasim, P-A-S-S-I-M. Now, it is translated, write this down, to be stripped it's colorful, ornate robe that goes all the way down to the floor and to the wrist. Now, some say the robe even covered his palm. Because it was so long, it is said that Joseph never worked because this is not the type of robe you wear when you go to work. He was the favorite uh, uh, of his father, and as a result, his brothers were jealous and envious of him. We're talking about Joseph. So they spoke word curses 
over him. Praise God. I want you to understand because at the end I'm going to share it with you. When you have the anointing, there's certain enemies that will rise up. And one of the biggest enemies, praise God, when you've been anointed, is spoken curses. Oh, you're with me. People who don't understand the anointing that's on your life, they'll begin to speak curses on you. They'll say, why is she always laughing like that? How in the world, praise God, why he has to dress like that? Why he talks like that? Why he walks like that? It's because of the anointing. Anointing. Glory to God. But I'm here to tell you the enemy to the anointing. One of them is the spoken curses. Are you with me? And, and so it's important uh, to know that with all the jealousy and the envy, which are two other, praise God, enemies of the anointing, Joseph had to face. It didn't stop his destiny, but instead, praise God, it propelled him towards his destiny. Oh my God, see the plan for death landed him in the house of Potiphar, who was the captain of Pharaoh's army. Therefore, it was closer to his destiny, even though he was falsely accused and lied upon even there. But the anointing, even while he was serving two years of prison, ah, he still had the anointing and God elevated him even in the prison. Oh my God. Genesis 39, 2 to 6 says, the Lord was with Joseph. Hallelujah. So he succeeded in everything he did. He was anointed. He, he was anointed to serve. Her, praise God. Father, if I noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph. Are you with me? Giving him success in everything that he did. This please, the Bible says, Potiphar, so he soon made Joseph his personal attendant. He put him in charge of his entire household, the Bible says, and everything he owned. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar's household for Joseph's sake. Oh, you hear me? When you have the anointing, praise God, and God promotes you, and God uses you on that job and he used you in that office, praise God, of government. Uh, he uses you in your business, glory to God. He uses you in somebody else's corporation. I'm here to tell you, praise God, others are going to be blessed because of the anointing upon your life. Hallelujah. See, Joseph was able to succeed because he was good at what he does and, and carried a spirit of excellence. Hello, that when you have the anointing of God, that you do everything with the spirit of excellence. Those with the Joseph anointing, the Joseph mantle, praise God, those who have been anointed by God are generally very good at their jobs. They are sought after by others because they are known for the quality of their work. Praise God, when I was in New Orleans, praise God, and we, we were very successful in community development and the staff that I had, praise God, they would schedule appointments and go with me to meet with, praise God, presidents and uh, congressmen and senators and business leaders and on and on and on. And oftentimes, because they engage and, and, and on my behalf on the ministry and the, and the community development on New Orleans Center for Successful Living, praise God, many times, praise God, others would want to recruit our staff, my staff. Are you with me? Praise God. Many of them went on, praise God. Uh, I can name just a few, praise God, who went on to do great exploits. Glory to God. I think about, praise God, uh, Laverne, praise God, Kilgore at the time, and Sony, Kil Kilgore Sony. Amen. Praise God. How uh, Senator Landrew recognized the giftings upon her life. Praise God. And she would tell you today it was because of the anointing, praise God, that she was a punda in the, in the ministry and praise God, but she was recruited, praise God, to be a deputy, praise God, to assist her with her work. I can talk about Shirley Moses, praise God, who went on to head up uh, uh, in, in work in, in accounting and grants and, and at Xavier University. I can talk about, uh, praise God, uh, Miss Parker, glory <laughs> God, how she went on and uh, became a, a principal, glory to God, of a, of a school in New Orleans and uh, anointed. And many of them went on to get more degrees. And I can go on and on and on. And I can name others, praise God, who went forward for praise God. One of my other personal assistants that, uh, you know, 
Uh, hallelujah. Celeste, hey man, Celeste went on, praise God, and she went to work for, for an environmental agency, nonprofit agency at Dillard University. And I can go on and on and on. Hey Amen. So when there's an anointing on your life and you're training and leading others, that anointing will fall upon them and others will want, praise God, to recruit who works for you. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, oh my God. See, these individuals, they would go the extra mile to ensure that they are producing in excellence. Uh, they are usually very critical of themselves, praise God, because they will look back at what they did before and always think it wasn't good enough and they couldn't have done it any better. Amen. See, it, the, the truth of the matter is their 20% effort is better than 80% of the people around them. Therefore, whatever they do outside everyone else, praise God, is going to always outshine everyone else. Why? Because of the anointing on their lives. I'm talking to you right now. You have that anointing, praise God, in entrepreneurship. You have that anointing in government. You have that anointing to run a nonprofit. God has raised you up. See, the Bible tells us that Joseph was a very handsome and well-built young man. Oh, my God. Genesis 39, 6b. Oh, my God. Somebody said, Dr. Greg, you must have looked like Joe. Oh, I'm just playing. Praise God. I just had to throw that in. Now, those with the Joseph anointing are generally well-groomed, praise God, and they present themselves very well. This, this is another reason they stand out. When everyone else is looking, praise God, like they've been baptized in lemon juice, praise God, they will always stand out. When everyone else is looking, uh, praise God, like, 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 like they don't know where they're going and, 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 and they don't know what they're doing, praise God. Those who have been anointing will always rise to the top. Glory to God, you'll always be able, be able to point them out. See, why, glory to God, because of the anointing, because they understand that they were uh, called for such a time as this. They understand because th w w that where, where they are now is not where they will end up later. They are dressing up, meaning the next level up. Are you with me? If you look at the first ladies of the United States, hear me now, they all look like the first lady before they became the first lady. Are you listening to me? Those with the Joseph anointing, praise God, they never wait for the position to define them or to look the part. Hallelujah. They look the part and act as a prophecy into the position. Are you listening to me? Uh, glory to God. They dress how they see themselves. They act how they expect to become. They are before they become. Are you with me? They are prophetic. Oh my God. Again, Joseph gets falsely accused by Potiphar's wife for attempted rape. So he was thrown into prison the Bible says. Now it says that he left his coat as he fled. I believe this is a picture of his second mantle, which was promotion from the first mantle, which his brothers took. Now, please understand that even though the first two mantles were taken or apparently stolen from him, uh, this never changed anything in the rim of the spirit. You remember the coat of many colors? That was a mantle that was placed on Joseph. Glory to God, he was the favorite son of his fathers. Oh my God, so as with the case of his brothers, this just propelled him further into his destiny. Even though he is behind bars, this was just another stepping stone to his final destination. I'm telling you right now, praise God, some of you right now, you're in the final, praise God, steps into your destiny. You're about to step into your destiny. See, the enemy can't stop you. He can't, he can accuse you, praise God. He can be jealous of you. He can speak word curses. He can just appear to steal uh, from you and, nat and, and what's, what's naturally yours, but he cannot take your gifts. Hallelujah. He cannot take the anointing. He cannot take, praise God, the anointing that's upon your life. Genesis 39, 21 and 23 through 23 says, but the Lord was with Joseph 
in the prison and showed him his faithful love. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Not only was he a favorite of his father, but here now he's thrown in the prison. And he's a favorite, praise God, the prison warden. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all of the other prisoners. Hallelujah. The warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. You hear me, brothers and sisters? See, the Lord was with Joseph and caused everything he did to succeed. See, in our day, glory to God, we see the Lord releasing strategies from heaven to fund the church's mission and to do kingdom business all across the globe. He's raising up men and women that understand their purpose is to bring money into the kingdom for such a time as this. During hard economic times, we see it's necessary for the Lord to release the same power and calling that Joseph received on his uh, praise God on his church to be able to answer the crisis of our day. See, the Bible says in Psalms 105 that the Lord sent a famine on the earth and then he sent a man by the name of Joseph to Egypt for a purpose. Are you with me? I'm talking about being anointed for God's purpose. The Lord sent in his man with the calling, the anointing, and the mantle to provide a solution to the crisis of a worldwide famine. It is not far-fetched to think we could have a similar crisis in our hands with the world's economy. I just want to step out and say this. I believe in this season that God has anointed, praise God, Kamala Harris for this season. Oh, you don't hear me. Praise God. God has been preparing her in hidden places. Glory to God. Hidden, praise God. Here she was the vice president. Praise She ran for president and it wasn't her time. She didn't have the anointing for that time. She had the anointing as an attorney general. Glory to God. But she didn't have the anointing to become president. Glory to God. She didn't get enough delegates. Hallelujah. But she became vice president and was almost, she was in almost like being in uh, it's, uh, and it's uh, uh, hidden, but she no, uh, nobody knew of her. They was wondering where was she, but then when it was her time, praise God, oh my God, she came out of that shoot like a rocket, fired up, glory to God, bringing joy. People talk about her laughter. I'm talking about the spoken curses. They get upset because she laughs a lot. That's the joy of the Lord. You don't know if she had to testify, you would find out, praise God, she understands who she is and she's anointed praise God for this season oh my God I know some of you probably don't like what I'm saying but I'm telling you glory to God God will anoint those that you think praise God is not about who you think what you think and how you feel but God will anoint those glory to God for this season that praise God others will even reject and not understand because they don't understand but it can't stop what God has in store oh hallelujah oh my God hallelujah this is a new day praise God as we studied Genesis 41 1 through 7 17 praise God through verse 24 hallelujah oh my God Joseph demonstrated prophetic accuracy when he interpreted Pharaoh's two dreams. In the first dream, Pharaoh saw seven fat cows and then seven famished cows. The famished cows evolved the fat cows but remained famished. In the second dream, Pharaoh saw seven full heads of grain and seven scrawny heads of grain. The seven scrawny heads of grain devoured the full head of grain but remained scrawny. Joseph accurately interpreted the dream. Oh my God, do you hear what I'm saying? He what he interpreted the dream. Oh my God, there would be seven years of plentiful harvest, he said, followed by seven years of extreme famine. Uh, Joseph then went on beyond prophetic and, and accuracy and gave Pharaoh strategic wisdom. Hallelujah. Uh, he advised, uh, praise God, Pharaoh to appoint a person to oversee the collection and storage of a vast grain reserve during the years of plenty. Joseph was appointed, hallelujah, for the task. God had prepared him for the task. We see that in Genesis 41, 25 to 
2, verse 46. Now, prophetic accuracy is the domain of the prophets. Strategic wisdom and its implementation is the domain of the entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs are successful. He prophesied, praise God, he interpreted the dream. He prophesied, and then he switched into the, the entrepreneur spirit, the anointing of the entrepreneur, and began to basically promote himself, praise God, to oversee <coughs> this time of distribution and storage during this great famine. Joseph had the anointing to manage resources. So as we study the life of Joseph in Egypt, we see that he went through three phases. I'm going to be real quick as I close. First, in Genesis 39, 1 through 6 says, he was, in, he was a slave in Potiphar's house. He proved so trustworthy that Potiphar promoted him to manage all the resources of his household. Second, in Genesis 39, 20 through 23 says, after being falsely accused, thrown in prison, he became successful, a successful manager of resources within the prison, even although he was a prisoner himself. And here's the third. Joseph was promoted to become prime minister of Egypt. As prime minister, he managed Egypt resources before and during a time of extreme crisis called the famine. Joseph learned how to collect, how to store, and how to distribute the grain. Also, when he was promoted as prime minister, Joseph became the second wealthiest and most powerful man in all of ancient Egypt. I'm talking about the anointing. Hallelujah. So it may sound inspiring or exciting, but Joseph was anointed, brothers and sisters, to manage resources. Don't despise small beginnings. Don't despise where you are. Where you are is not where you're going to end up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't despise it, my brothers and sisters. Joseph went then and spent 13 years managing resources for Potiphar and in prison, and then 14 years managing storehouses throughout Egypt. That's a total of 27 years of hard work. Often prophets are stereotypically seen as isolated. They disappear into a cave for long periods of time and then dramatically they reappear with the word of the Lord. This perception will change as prophets go to work. Joseph came out of isolation and went straight to work, brothers and sisters. There is a principle in the Bible that states one can chase a thousand and two can put 10,000 to flight. In Leviticus 2, 26 and 8 and Deuteronomy 32, uh, verse 30. In other words, unity multiplies authority. The coming unity between the prophets and the entrepreneurs will result, praise God, in a great transformation. Oh, my God, a great restoration. Praise God, doing this season. Oh, my goodness, glory to God. I come to tell you today, hallelujah, God has raised you up and he's giving you creativity, witty inventions, innovation systems, strategies, new technologies, or hallmarks of the Joseph anointing. That's what you have birthed on the inside of you. Glory to God. So as I bring this to a close, I want to praise God. I just want to leave you with praise God, how you can recognize uh, the, the, the enemies of the anointing as I bring this to a close. Listen to me. First of all, when you've been gifted and anointed by God, there's jealousy that's going to show up. Praise God. Ultimately, it can turn even to a spirit of murder. See, unforgiveness, a lying spirit, false accusation, word curses, as I told you earlier, pride, uh, uh, spendthrift. A wasteful spirit and, and selfishness. See, I believe the main reason Joseph still flourished as a slave through persecution, abandonment, falsely accused, prospered is because of the following 12 character traits that was found in Joseph. Number one, while suffering, Joseph never saw himself as a slave. He refused to accept the labels of his family or his enemies. He did not allow the circumstance he was facing to determine who he was, even though his brother sold him into slavery. Here's number two. He did not allow man's concept of who they said he was to mar the concept of who he knew he was. Ah, uh, his brothers were jealous of him because of the favor he had with his father and the coat of many colors that was given to him as he wore with dignity. Number three, he believed in the dream he had of himself and the dream others had of him. Joseph had a dream in which his brothers shaved and were bowing down to his chief. 
uh, while in another dream, the sun, the moon, and the stars were all honoring Joseph. Uh, he could see later that his dreams were prophetic of his future, where he would eventually become prime minister. Glory to God in the wealthiest, second wealthiest man in all of ancient Egypt. Number four, he was a man who remained focused in spite of his pain, in spite of his disappointment, injustice, slavery, deceit, jealousy, false accusation, and even imprisonment. Number five, he did not hold grudges. Listen to me now. Number six, he was not a man of vengeance. Number seven, he was a man of excellence in everything he did. Number eight, he was a man who was faithful to what he had been given to do. Hello. Number nine, and he, all, he was always positive about everything. Number 10, he openly allowed others to see the power of God operating in his life. Everyone he met, praise God, glory to God, they thought well of him. Number 11, he openly demonstrated his passion and love for God by how he lived. And number 12, he openly showed his compassion for his friends, his families, and even his enemies. Oh my God, I got to go. This is Dr. Greg Thomas. I pray you got something out of this today. I'm talking about the Joseph anointing. Maybe next week I'll talk about Moses and the anointing that was on his life to lead the children of Israel out of bondage. Oh, we got to go. I'll see you again next time. Don't forget to subscribe, share this message with your family and friends. I need your help as we continue to spread the gospel. Till next time, Remember, the spirit of greatness is upon you. The seed of greatness lives within you. Go forth and do something great in somebody else's life. We'll see you again next time.